And we're actually going to take communion together on this Christmas Eve. And so if you just want to grab your elements and if you don't yet have a, a, a little cup with some juice and a wafer, then just simply lift up your hands because the host will come round and they will just put one in your hands. Just keep them high. And as we're doing that, I'd love just to read just a portion of scripture that's familiar around this season. The hosts are coming. Just keep those hands up. It says in Isaiah 9, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called, say it with me, a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Come on, isn't that good? Come on, that's our Jesus. That's what he will be called. He'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. You know, as we just take this moment right now, just to take communion, to remember, a sacrament to remember the, the, the price that Jesus paid with his life of coming to earth. And as we just reflect on those four metaphors that we just read in the book of Isaiah, that he is wonderful counselor, that he is the one that actually knows what you're going through. He came with flesh on, he was God, but with flesh on came and dwelt amongst us. He knows what you're going through because he lived it. And so today, readily available for you and every single person in this room, is the comfort of God with you, because He is our counselor. He knows what you have gone through this year. He knows the ups and He knows the downs. He is your wonderful counselor. He is also mighty God. That you're needing a miracle? Well, He's mighty. He's the one over, above it all. He is mighty God. But I also love it. It goes on to say He's everlasting Father. He's the eternal one, the one who's always been, and He is Father the most intimate way that he could describe the relationship with his people. He is our Father, and we can come to him, into his arms of our loving Father, the one who loves to give good gifts to his children. And finally, he is also the Prince of Peace, that he has closed the gap through coming, and he has given us the ability to have peace with God. But peace is like a multi-layered pudding. On the top, we have peace with God because our sins are no longer held against us because he's dealt with it. But we can also know peace in our every single waking moment of our life. The things that used to rob us of peace have now been taken because we can experience the Prince of Peace in our lives. So he is wonderful counselor. He is mighty God. He is everlasting Father, and He is the Prince of Peace. How about we just close our eyes? And how about we just say, thank you, Jesus, for coming. Come on, you just say that right now. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. Thank you, Jesus, for coming from heaven to earth. Thank you, for Jesus, for coming and providing salvation for us. Thank you for being the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, everlasting Father. You know exactly what I need right now. You know exactly what I'm going through right now. And I just choose to remember right now all that you are, Jesus. So in just this moment, how about we take the wafer, let's eat together. Let's take of the juice, symbolic of the blood. And we're going to sing together. We give you all the glory. Just invite you in this moment, just to lift up your hands, to lift your eyes to the heavens. We behold Jesus. Come on, let's sing it together. We give you all the glory. We give you. 
If anyone is thankful for Jesus right now, how about we just give him a shout and a clap of praise this morning? Well, welcome to Dream Builders Church. It's fantastic to see you on this Christmas Eve. My name is Mark, and I lead the church here with my wife, Chantel, who's going to be speaking a little later on. But how about you just take a moment just to turn around and welcome one another to church today? Very cool. We'll take your seats. Well, we've got a jam-packed service in store for you today. Uh, we've got a kids item coming up. We've got uh, Chantel is going to be preaching as well, which is going to be amazing. But right now, we have a bit of a tradition in this house of playing past the parcel on Jesus' birthday. And in the past, we've had some terrible gifts, if you had to be the person wearing it. And we're going to continue that tradition. Some might think that the shirt came from one of these gifts, but apparently it's worse. Uh, no, I'm joking. But we've got some, we're going to play past the pastor, so you can stay seated. We're going to start some music, and I'm going to get uh, Adam, our youth director, to come and join us as well as we play as well. So we're going to start, because this is not seated, I think we go, have one. Let's throw, it out, throw one out. We're going to start off. Are we ready for past the parcel? Do you need me to explain the rules? I, no, think, I think we get it. it. I think they got it. Come on, let's go. Kick it off at the back. Here we go. Scarlett. Who wants it? Let's go. <laughs> And let's pass it. When Shall you hear clap? the music stops, what happens, Adam? When oh, the when the music stops. stops, if you're too holding it, someone just rip it out the other person's hands and you can open it. Oh, oh. there we go. Fred Flintstone. I thought you had oh, it. <laughs> what a nice guy. Hands it back. Can I embarrass you for a second? Can we, I feel like we all need the joy of Freddie Flintstone. Come on, can we stand up? Give it up for Freddie Woo! Flintstone. That is a good outfit. That is amazing. Thank you so much. You have brought great joy to my life today. Okay, music go on, back on. A frisbee over here. Adam, we want to see you dance for this. What do you got? I can't dance. What's a oh, Christmas there we go. dance? Oh, oh, hey. We need someone who can actually dance up here. I like that. Adam. Where is it? Oh, where, where, where are the presents? Oh, Jody's got it. Oh, we got Charlotte's got it. What do we got? I think someone got a frisbee on the first round. That's pretty good. That's not allowed to go inside, by the way. We're I can't see what it is. Very socks. cool. Socks! Oh, you got to put them on right now. We've got some socks. I'm joking, I'm joking. Prizes right on every now. level. The budget has gone to a new level this year. <laughs> All right, guys, let's kick it off again. <laughs> Feel
feel free to swing a bit. Let's hold. Hey. Oh, Tana. Oh, where are we? I have no idea where the other one is. We're all the way at the back. Oh, that's it. Oh, Come on, rip that in. layer off. Rip it off. All right, once, it's, once the layer has gone off, we're going to toss both presents into the middle. So middle, you've got to get ready for a catch, OK? Be better than the English cricket team. That is all I can oh, say. Oh, Sonny's a Sonny's have to go All on. right, get ready to oh, throw it into the middle. Sunny. Throw it into the middle. Watch it. Here we go. It's coming in. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Send one back. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Who's opening it? Someone's going to rip, rip it out. Rip it out. Oh, we, oh, we got the final layer. Ooh. Very cool. You have to put that on for us, though, and we're going to have oh, to get Shelby photos. Had to put that one on as and well. Shelby, well done. Yeah. You should maybe swap because they look like they're different sizes, and the green one could be more Tim's size. <laughs> I'm not saying you're just a bigger guy, that's all. I'm not saying anything by it. I know you go to the gym every lunchtime, mate. <laughs> Can we put the music back on? Hey! Uh, hey! Merry Christmas! Oh, it fits perfectly. Go on, Tim. Give it up for hey, Tim and Shelby. Good. It looks good. Well done. Thank you, Adam. That's a good Christmas tradition, isn't it? Well, the kids, if you just want to get ready, if you're a kid in here, we've been practicing for an item. So if you want to get ready to come on. By the way, I just do want to give a big shout out to Morgan. That is a strong outfit. The thing that I love is that the party just does not stop. He's got the beard, he's got the shirt, and it could just continues on down. There we go. Thank you. Once again, bring great party. <laughs> That's good. Are we the are kids ready? Okay, kids, come on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Give the kids a big welcome. And I've got nothing to do with this, so I'm going to get off the stage. Kids, are we ready? Kids, are we ready? I don't, I can't, are we ready? That's better, okay. We're gonna be right here watching Brianna, but I wanna hear your loudest singing voices. Have we been practicing? Yes? That didn't sound very convincing. Have we been practicing? That's better, all right. I wanna hear your loudest singing voices. Are we ready? Let's go. Sing, this is Jesus. Give praise. The Christ foretold. Love. 
make a way for us. Sing, this is Jesus. Emmanuel, Lord. We will adore him. Well done, kids. You can head off that way. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Cute factor 1000, I reckon. <laughs> love that. Thank you so much. Well, one thing that we do love to do is just welcome all those who are new through our doors today. We'd like to say just a big thank you. Thank you for coming to church today. We'd just love to put a yellow bag in your hand that has a bit of information about who we are as a church. It has a bit of chocolate in as well. And so as the hosts are getting ready, if you are new, could you just be really bold and just put your hand up right now? And so the hosts could just pop one of those in your hand. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for coming. It's great to see you. Just keep your hand up high until that bag comes just at the back behind you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's so good. Just down the front, we need a couple of bags. That is amazing. And if you are new, you can just simply scan the QR code in front of you, and that can get you a free coffee after the service that will be ready for you, waiting nice and hot, if that's what you wish as well. So you can scan the QR code on the seat in front of you to do that as well. There's just one announcement I have. Um, is next Sunday, we're going to do uh, one of my favorite services of the year. It's actually our Celebrate Sunday, where we're going to take a look back across the year and just take a moment to stop before we go into 2024 and go, hey, here's what we're doing, here's where we're going. We're actually going to stop and say, thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. And so we're going to hear some exciting stories of what God has been up to as well. So that's Celebrate Sunday, which is happening next Sunday as well. Well, we're going to take up our tithes and offerings right now. So let's just take a moment to do that. And I'm going to pray for those who are taking, giving this morning. But let's just bow our heads and close our eyes. That'd be great. God, I thank you that on this Christmas season, we get to, say, we get to stop. We get to say thank you so much. Thank you that Jesus, you came for us, that you died on the cross, and so we may have life, that you are the ultimate gift giver, and that God, this season is not about gifts, this season is about you, the one who gave his life for us. And so in return right now, we know that everything that we have is yours anyway, but we give back to you in the, in the form and in the means of our tithes and our offerings. We so gladly and cheerfully give, Lord, because we know that that is what you desire. And we say thank you that you constantly and consistently care for us every single day in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. amen. The buckets are going to come around and Pastor Chantel is going to come and continue our Behold series. How about you give her a huge hand as she comes? Fantastic. Whoa. Happy Christmas Eve, everyone. How are you? 
Are you good? Is everyone excited? Service has been amazing already. So many wonderful highlights. Thank you, Kendall. I get the privilege and honor to be able to speak to you this morning on Christmas Eve. It's so exciting this time of year. And everyone looks so wonderful as well. It's it's because people are on holidays, isn't it? (laughs) A little bit more relaxed. (laughs) It's wonderful. But, you know, on Friday night, I got to go and do the tradition of walking down Dunster Street, seeing the Christmas lights. Has anyone done that yet? They're looking fantastic this year, aren't they? They're really, yeah. I was like, people went next level, next level this year. Hey, especially special friends as well. But um, yeah, is there, you know what I love about a Christmas light is that throughout the daytime, it doesn't really look like anything having these wires wrapped around your trees. But as soon as it's nighttime and you turn on a switch, the lights look so beautiful in dark, so illuminating, so so it captures your eye. And I love it that at this Christmas time, that is exactly what took place when Jesus came 2,000 years ago. He came in the midst of darkness and he shined so bright, such a beautiful light for all to to see. And so that's why we celebrate. The reason for the season is Him, isn't it? And so we've been singing beautiful songs. I love that, Oh Holy Night. I was tearing up. It's such a great, anyone else like singing on the top of their lungs, to Oh Holy Night? I'm just like, la, oh, just getting it out of me. So <laughs> I love that season. But you know, what I love is that this time of year, Jesus, we stop and we remember that Jesus was born and he dwelled among us. He is, it, that's why it's called Christmas. It's called Christmas, uh, Christmas. And I love that at Christmas time, families stop and they gather together around celebrating Jesus' birthday. Don't you love it? All around the world, that business is shut, that families gather. You don't have to work. You don't have to do anything. Sometimes people do have to, but people gather together around tables to celebrate the birth of Jesus, whether they realize it or not. I just think that's absolutely absolutely incredible that this has been happening for centuries, for centuries. And so what I want to do today is I simply just want to stop in that and for us to remember the reason for the season, and that is Him and the birth and the nativity scene. And through all of that, I believe that He brought us celebration, reconciliation, and salvation. And together, these three keys all embody what Christmas is is. And so we've been doing a series recently all about beholding, beholding Christ. And beholding, when you read it in the scriptures, is simply about a gaze, a stop, your attention, something really important is about to be read as you're reading. But also you right now are beholding me and I am beholding you. And you're looking amazing, I may add. And so we're reading our last behold statement this morning. And so join in with me. We're going to be reading from Matthew 1, 18 to 25. It's going to be up on the screen. But before I start, I just want to just a little bit of context about the book of Matthew. I love the book of Matthew. Matthew was a disciple of Jesus. He was a tax collector. His name was Levi. And then it changed into Matthew. He was a Jewish uh, man. And so when you read the book of Matthew, he's writing to a really Jewish audience. Um, and so a lot of what he does and his style of writing is he 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 speaks a lot about the Old Testament because he wants to fulfill all that was prophesied, all that was spoken about, that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. And so when you're reading it, there's over 199 different verses that are referenced from the Old Testament. And the book of Matthew as well is is the book where Jesus does most of his teaching. You hear a lot of teachings of Jesus uh, more so than any other other gospel. And so we pick it up, Matthew 1, 18 to 25. It says this, now the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. 
and her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, he decided to break the engagement quietly. I just want to pause there for a moment because I just want to stop and just highlight this this beginning of the nativity story is actually incredibly scandalous, isn't it? <laughs> Does anyone ever just stop and be like, wow, there's some stuff going on, but it's incredibly supernatural as well at the same moment. Can you imagine being Joseph and encountering Mary, Mary coming to Joseph, who they're about to get married together and her saying, Joseph, I've got some news to tell you. And he's like, yeah, what, what is it? She's like, I'm pregnant. What? Like, is anyone else ever read this and be like, this is like, yeah, stuff that you watch on Netflix sometimes, you know, <laughs> it's not, uh, but yeah, it's pretty wild. And she's like, and, and, and let me tell you this, uh, it's from the Holy Spirit. Like, can you imagine the array of emotions going through Joseph's mind in that moment? It could be an emotion of betrayal or disappointment or, or even doubt in that very moment. But I love this next line, which I take so much comfort in, in verse 20, and it says this. It says, but, just three simple words, but, B-U-T. And sometimes in life, we need but God moments. We need but God moments to arrive in seasons in life when everything seems against us. And here, Joseph, in this moment of doubt and disappointment, there is a but God moment. Come on, so often in the scriptures, we read about but God moments. Our lives are actually filled with but God moments. Before we knew Jesus, we were walking down this path, but then we met Jesus and now we're walking down this path. Or how often do you read Jesus saying, you may go through many trials and sorrows, but take heart for I have overcome the world. There are so many but moments in our life. And I want to encourage you today. Come on, you may be going through something this morning, but there is a but God moment for you today. And there is a but God moment here for Joseph. Why don't you turn to someone next to you right now and say, how big is your butt today? <laughs> Come on, I hope you have a good big butt moment. I don't know. I don't know why you're laughing. Like it's in the Bible, you know. I'm not. I'm not being naughty. I just hope today you remember. Come on, kids. I hope you remember that we can have big butt moments in God. Amen. 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 All right. So let's go to Joseph's big butt God moment. But as he considered these things, behold, here we go. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded. He took his wife, but knew her not until she was given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Don't you love his big... God moment, but God moment, that from a place and an array of motions from doubt and disappointment, but God, he changed it to a fulfillment and a hope and a promise that I am sending to you right now, Emmanuel, God with us. And that is why we are celebrating Christmas today, because he is Emmanuel, God with with us. Come on, say to somebody next to you this morning, God is with you today. 
And so Joseph, because Joseph was a, a Jewish uh, man, he would have grown up reading the Old Testament. And so when he heard the word from the angel that, that Mary was pregnant, um, he also heard a, a, a fulfillment of Scripture that we read in Isaiah 7 verse 14. And it says this by the prophet Isaiah. He says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, there we go, we see it again. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And so Joseph would have known this promise that was prophesied 400 years. Can you imagine being Joseph and being like, I'm the chosen generation that this prophecy is just about to be fulfilled? Wow, that's no small thing. And better yet, I am the father that will get to see the Messiah grow up. Like that is pretty incredible, isn't it? Who would love to be that generation that gets to see all that Jesus walks this earth, walks this earth and do what he did, but he's here today and he's dwelling amongst us. He's dwelling amongst us. And so we celebrate that. We celebrate today that he is Emmanuel, God with us. And I just want to remind you about that today, that he is with us, that he loves you, and that he is for you. God is with me. And that simply means that whenever we go through life, whether good or bad, whether we know who God is, He is there with us. We actually just need to stop and become aware of Him. I love it in the Lord's Prayer. It says this, it says, Our Father who art in heaven. And really back in the day when people, uh, you know, they didn't have the words that we had when we read the Scripture. Uh, they didn't even have them. They used to call him Yahweh. They couldn't even pronounce the correct names for God. Sometimes they would just know him as a simple breath. And so when Jesus comes and he speaks about the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven, sometimes they would illustrate it like this. They would say this, our Father who is as close as the air that I breathe. Today, this morning, Jesus is as close as the air that we breathe. He is so near. He is so close. He is so present. And he is with you. He is with you. I take so much comfort in that, don't you? He's Emmanuel. God is with us. And this week, you know, with the fires um, that took place, you know what, I was in the office and I got this text on my phone that's saying, leave immediately. And I'm here writing this message and I'm just like, no, I need to finish this for Sunday. But I'm reading about Emmanuel and I'm like, God, when you are near, there is no need for me to fear. You are near <laughs> right now. But it says this in Isaiah 43, verse 2, it says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm me. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. Why? Because I will be with you. That's good news today, isn't it, church? Psalm 23, verse 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. There is nothing, no, nothing that we will go through in our past, our present, or the future that God will not be with us. And He's not just with us, but the Holy Spirit dwells within us today. That's good news this morning, isn't it, church? He is the reason why we celebrate today. He knows you. He loves you. He cares for you. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He even knows your real hair color. Did you know that? <laughs> My real hair color's going gray. Anyway, very sad. But Emmanuel means he loves me. We have his presence with us. And some of us think that God is actually out to get us. Some of us think that he's not present because of things that we have done wrong. But I want to encourage you today. God loves you so much. 
He is with you always and forever. And he showed us his love by sending his son, Jesus. We couldn't get to God, so he came to us. And he is engaged in every area of our lives. He is a part, Jesus is a part of every detail. You may be sitting here this morning and this time of the year, we actually stop and reflect about our life. And, you know, I want to say this, Jesus was divine, but he was actually human. He was actually human, and he took the things that we go through really personally. He took it really personally. So he understands the emotions that we feel. He knows the disappointments that we experience. He knows that loved one that we may have lost this year, and our heart is a little bit grieving. He knows that child that is far away from God. He knows, and he is with you today. He knows that that prayer that we're still praying for, that is not yet to be answered, come on. He knows and he loves you and he is with you today. And better yet, he's for you. He's for your marriage. He's for your family. He's for your future. He's for all that he has for you. He is for you today. I really feel right now prophetically that someone in this room needs to hear this. God is for you. He's not against you. He's not mad at you. He's not left you or forsaken you. He is for you today. He is for you today. Romans 8 verse 31 says this. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Come on, that's to ce- something to celebrate this morning. He is for you today. And not only is Emmanuel something for us to celebrate that he is with us, he loves us, he's for us, but Emmanuel also brought reconciliation. And I know that's a really big word, but reconciliation just simply means a coming together of two parties coming to peace with one another. And that simply means peace with God, peace with others, and peace with yourself. God brought reconciliation through his son, Jesus. He made a way where there seemed to be no way. And we read in Colossians 1, 19 to 20. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth. And by the means of Christ's blood on the cross, Jesus came to restore mankind back to himself back into the right order. We can now have peace with God because of what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago. That is something to celebrate. That is good news. That is something to rejoice in. We don't deserve it. We actually don't earn it, but it's a gift that he has given us to be in right standing with him. And we are to have peace with others, peace with others. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18 says, all of this is from God who brought Christ, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Ministry. When you and I are reconciled with God, he can't help but to reconcile us with other people. It's a part of his very nature, everywhere you go, being reconciled with others. And we now live out that ministry of reconciliation. And now we are to bring peace to all. We are to bring the good news to all who we encounter. And we are to wear the shoes of peace everywhere we go. I love it in in Ephesians 6. It talks about a piece of the armor being the the shoes of peace. I've got it up on screen. For, For the shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. 
So everywhere you walk this Christmas and beyond, would you wear the shoes of peace? Everywhere you go, would you carry peace in with others? When you're sitting at that table with your family members, when you're engaging in conversation with others, come on, would you be the one that brings peace to others this Christmas? You know, I love watching... Um, I don't know why I like seeing this. It's really t a time waster. But have you ever seen those failed videos of dogs and cats that when, um, you know, you've got a, 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 a wet cement and all of a sudden you see like a dog like walking past it and you see like the paw prints in the cement or has anyone ever seen that before online? I, I, I find it incredibly amusing. Um, or have you ever seen when, um, you know, someone spills flour or something on the floor and, and you see like a cat or a dog and, and, and they, they walk and they have like paw prints and you can see all these like flower prints in the ground. Is anyone else? Or is it just me? Am I by myself right now? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. I need another hobby, don't I? Um, <laughs> But can I encourage you, would you have prints of peace everywhere you go, prints in the ground? Imagine if we saw flower prints of peace in the streets because I'm carrying the good news. I'm bringing my, my footprint of, print of peace everywhere that I go. Come on, walk into these spaces this Christmas, bringing peace into everywhere you go. Maybe there's a relationship that actually needs to be reconciled this year, the, the render this year and beyond. Bring peace to those situations. You know, my, my parents uh, actually got divorced when I was about 15 years old and my mum has remarried since then and my dad, but over the last couple of years, we've actually had Christmas all together as a family. My stepdad's there, my mom, my, my, my biological dad. And, and, and one day I stopped and I said, Lord, how did this happen? And, and he reminded me that when we were in the UK before moving over here that one of the things we were really praying into is, God, I just need a, a hope of what's going to take place when we get here. And one of the words that he gave me, he said, Sham, when you come back, I'm going to bring reconciliation to your family. And I remember having this conversation with my, my mom, not necessarily about what God had spoken to me about, but she said, Chantel, ever since you've come home, we've been doing Christmases together as a whole family. And I was like, wow, God, that's you bringing peace with my family where it could look so divided, but actually it is united under the banner of peace. Come on, he wants to bring peace in some relationships this Christmas and beyond for you. Peace with others. It's what God does. Can I encourage you, walk in that this Christmas. And lastly, this, he wants to bring peace to yourself. As I was saying before, sometimes at the end of the year, we really stop and we ponder about our lives and we, built, we actually beat ourselves up, don't we? This time of year, we're like, I could have done this better. I didn't take that opportunity or this hasn't happened or I lost my temper a little bit too much here. But can I encourage you, would you have peace with yourself? It says in Luke 2, um, Luke, sorry, Luke 6, verse 31, it says, Do to others as you would like them to do to you. This is the golden rule, isn't it? Treat others the way that you would like to be treated. But so often we treat others better than we treat ourselves. Am I right? Am I right? Come on, would you treat yourself better? Would you treat yourself better? Would you have peace yourself? Come on, there may be chaos and things that are broken and not mended within you. Jesus came to bring peace. Would you allow him into those deepest parts of your heart? Would you have peace with yourself? Give yourself some slack. Have some peace with yourself. Make some peace he wants to bring peace to the chaos in your mind. He wants to bring peace to the anxious thoughts. Have peace in yourself. 
That is the whole reason why Emmanuel came, is so that we would experience his peace today and forever. Have peace with yourself this Christmas and beyond. And lastly this, Emmanuel brought salvation. We are saved from something, we are saved for something, and we are saved by something. We are saved from something. I am saved from sin. I am saved from self. I am saved from eternal destination of hell. Let's be real about this. Pastor Mark talking. We are saved from that this morning. We are saved from condemnation. We are saved from fear. We are saved from death. We are saved. And Jesus paid the price for us. This is actually a free gift. Don't give it to somebody else. Don't rewrap it and, you know, give that gift to somebody else. No, Jesus paid for us and He is the only way for us to receive salvation. That's good news, isn't it? That is such good news. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast. Grace that you have been saved. Let's never take that for granted. Let's not treat that like something that is cheap, but it is the greatest gift. And we are saved for something. Each and every one of us has a plan and a purpose. Each and every one of us has a blueprint that God wants us to walk out. I love it this year, Mark, Pastor Mark preached a series all about the purpose-driven life. Are you living out that purpose today? Can anyone remember what those five purposes is of why we are here on this earth? Does anyone remember? Number one, we're here to what? Worship. We are here to worship. What's the other? We are here for fellowship. We're here for fellowship. This is what we're doing right now, gathering together. We are here for discipleship, to become more like Jesus. We are here for ministry. Come on, our ministry is to bring peace, the good news to everyone we meet. We are also here for mission, to go and share the love of Christ everywhere. That is our purpose. But He's also given you gifts and talents and treasures. Are you using those gifts and talents and treasures that God has given you to further His kingdom? Are you stepping out in them? Because that is actually what salvation has been, that we are saved for something. We work out that salvation by living out the purpose that He has for each and every one of us. And lastly, this, we are saved by something. Jesus was and still is the only one who can bring reconciliation and salvation. And we celebrate that. It wasn't our strength or our successes or our ability to overcome. No, no, no. We needed Jesus. He was the greatest rescue plan. You know, I remember in uh, 2004, I think it was... um, It was probably like 26th of December, it was Boxing Day, and um, I just remember this was actually the day that the tsunami within Thailand took place, and we we, we read about that on the news, and, and, and it was a horrible event that took place, but that day, Boxing Day, we were with our family, and we decided to go to the beach, and and the waves looked fine for a moment. Um, so we're like, let's go in for a quick swim. No one else is around. So myself was there. My dad was with me and my two cousins who, if you've ever seen my cousin before, they're really tall and they're really strong. And so we're like, yeah, let's go out for a swim. Um, and so we jump into the water. But all of a sudden, the waves just began getting really, really choppy. Um, And all of a sudden, we got stuck in this rip. And it didn't matter that I was really good at swimming. I had swimming lessons, you know, since I was a child. I just couldn't keep my head above water. 
And then my two cousins who are incredibly strong, they were trying to help me, but they're also trying to help each other. And then my dad's coming over trying to help me again. But in that moment, he, he began having an asthma attack. So all of us four in the water were, were, were trapped in this rip and the waves were getting bigger and bigger. And there was no one in sight. I could see my uncle uh, running up the stairs, running and waving down the cars like, somebody come and help us, come and help us. And in that moment, actually, now that I think of it, it was a moment of life or death in that moment. But out of nowhere, these surfers came around the corner, coming. And all of a sudden, they were just like, get on our boards, get on our boards, we'll help you. Because the waves were getting choppier and choppier. And so we all got on um, these boards and they took us to the shore and they rescued us. Sometimes salvation is like this. It doesn't matter how good your abilities are. It doesn't matter how strong or who you are surrounded with. It doesn't even matter about the comfort of your family and those who are near and dear to you. Jesus is the only one that can rescue you. He is the only one who can rescue you. And this Christmas, we celebrate the very fact that Jesus, 2,000 years ago, was born in a manger. He didn't come to intimidate us. He didn't come on a white horse with a big sword. He didn't come to scare us. No, He came as a baby so that we could behold Him and adore Him. And that baby grew up. And that baby died on a cross and three days later rose again so that we can be in right re relationship with Him. That's good news, church, isn't it? Jesus is the reason for this season. And we celebrate the fact that He is Emmanuel. He is with us. He loves us. And He is for you today. We celebrate the fact that He brought reconciliation that now we can have peace with Him, peace with others, and peace with ourselves. And we are so thankful for the salvation that we have in Jesus because we are saved from something, we are saved for something, and we are saved by someone, and that is Him. That is Him. And so I just wanted to encourage us this morning that He is Emmanuel, God with us. Why don't you just bow your heads and close your eyes. I'm going to pray for you. But before I do that, I just want to read this scripture that it says in Matthew. Just keep your eyes closed. It says this. In Matthew 28, 19 to 20, it says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. He is with you always, even to the end of the age. Hold on to Him. But just as your eyes are closed and your head is bowed, if you are not right with Jesus this Christmas, if you would love to know and have a personal relationship with Jesus. And just like my story, when I almost drowned and the boogie board bo body surfers came to save us. Come on, Jesus is the only one that can save you. If you would love to be in a right standing relationship with Jesus, all we have to do is believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is is Lord, we will be saved. And if that's you right now and you do not know Jesus and would like to ask Him into your heart, I would love for you to be really bold right now and raise your hand so that we can join in a prayer with you. Is there anyone in this room that wants to invite Jesus into their heart this morning? Anybody? Yep, I see that hand. Is there anybody else who wants to ask Jesus into their heart? Yep, I see that hand. Become their Lord and Savior. 
He's the greatest rescuer to anyone else. Fantastic. And right now, I just want to pray over you. Thank you, Jesus, that you came, that you are Emmanuel, God with us. That you're not just with us, but your Holy Spirit dwells within us. I pray that this Christmas we would be carriers of your peace, that every space we walk into will we leave footprints of peace. Every conversation we engage with, would it be one of love and joy and kindness? I pray that we would never take for granted the salvation that you have given us. We thank you that you came. We thank you that you saved us, that you are the greatest rescue plan ever. And we honor that gift. I pray that we would be a people that would live out the purposes, that we would know that we are loved, that we would know that you are for us, that you will never leave us, even to the end of the age. We thank you, Jesus. And I just pray over every life and every household in their coming and their going, just protection, just for a covering. I just pray that they would find deep rest in you, that as they wait on you, that you would minister to the deep parts of their heart and bring uh, uh, peace out of chaos to those areas, that you would bring peace to the anxious mind, that you would bring peace to, eye, uh, to, to eyes and ears and hearts this morning and beyond. We worship you, we praise you, and we all said, amen, amen. Fantastic. Why don't we stand to our feet? We're going to finish on a great song of praise. I'm just going to invite Pastor Mark up as he closes the rest of your service. Merry Christmas, everyone, and we'll see you next weekend. Fantastic. How about we give Chantel just a big hand? If you did respond to Jesus today, a friend would have seen your hand, and they'd just love to put a resource in your, uh, in, in your hand just to help you and encourage you on that journey with you. We do want to thank you for coming and joining and worshiping with us this morning. We are going to fin finish with a song, but just at the end, if you would like prayer for anything going on in your world right now, uh, up the front is a team that uh, uh, would love to pray and stand with you and encourage you in prayer. Also, we want to let you know that we are praying for you this Christmas. We're praying for your travel. We're praying for your health. We're praying over your family time. We pray that it's filled with hope. It's filled with joy and that you're able to bring peace into your families that sometimes might be divided, but you are the reconciling factor amongst your homes. So, so God bless you. And let's just finish with a great song of praise. Amen. <laughs>